Halo Infinite has a customization issue that's fundamental to the game that's going to be a consistent problem throughout its lifespan. This realization hit me recently due to this coating right here, this amazing gold coating which I love and have been rocking pretty much ever since it came to the store, but so have a lot of other people. I'd say this meme right here pretty much explains the whole thing of being, well, I'm the one person who didn't buy into the crazy gold coating and now I'm just kind of looking weird by myself while everyone else is doing the same thing. And honestly, after seeing that meme, it kind of hit me that this is going to be a continuous issue with Halo Infinite and the way they do customization. Now I know waiting around for Halo Infinite to get into a good spot can be a pain for a lot of us, but you know what is a worse pain for you to experience? Pain from improper posture. And that's what FlexiSpot, the sponsor of this video, wants to help provide relief from. FlexiSpot recently sent me the Pro Plus Standing Desk E7. And let me tell you guys, this desk is a total game changer. As someone who works from home all day and then does Twitch YouTube content creation on the side at home all day, I spend a lot of time clicking buttons and sitting down. Well, with this sit-stand desk, that problem is alleviated. As someone who's 6 foot 4, a rather tall person, the FlexiSpot Pro Plus Standing Desk E7 is definitely tall enough for me to be able to stand while working and also be sitting in a comfortable position. I love how the desk keypad has memory settings so I can set it to exactly the height that fits me properly sitting and also standing. And the keypad has a USB connector to it so I can charge my phone while I'm at work. The funny thing is I actually owned a FlexiSpot desk before this sponsorship and now that old desk is now my dining room table. So if you're in the market for a sit-stand desk, I highly suggest FlexiSpot. My affiliate link is in the description and the pinned comment down below. Help support the channel and thank you very much for FlexiSpot for supporting this video. But now let's get right back into those details. Because even though I've paid into a few bits of microtransactions when it comes to Halo Infinite, you can see a lot of Mark 7 coatings that I have right here. A lot of them are either Twitch drops or things I've bought that are things that stand out a bit more than what's previously available to us all. Take for example the gloves I have on my Spartan right now. They look pretty awesome. I get a chance to see them in game. It looks great. But everything else I have for my Mark 7 is pretty much something that I've already unlocked either through a battle pass, which is paid, or through a different type of unlock, maybe through a campaign or something like that. Either way though, on the Mark 7, I only have this one and four other bits of customization available for me. And I definitely want to rock the newest and coolest thing. So this is the only one I'm really going to be using. All these other gloves right here are tied to microtransactions that I just don't exactly have the money to drop to spend and get new things for the game. Now, obviously you can make the argument that Kevin is a free to play multiplayer. That's kind of how they're expecting to make money. And I totally understand that. But the idea behind customization is that you want to feel you unique on the battlefield. You want to feel like that's you in the game, not somebody else or you're not following the recent trends. And that's currently the issue with Halo Infinite's multiplayer that it, moving forward, that's pretty much what it's going to be like. It's going to be whatever the coolest, newest thing is, people are going to be equipping it. But the problem is it's a kind of a catch 22 almost in a way where you're going to want to put on the cool new stuff, but so is everybody else, which makes it not that cool anymore. Bringing it all back around to this where, yeah, these guys do look awesome but so does everybody else. You lose that individuality, which I feel like we had a little bit more of that in Halo. When you look back at the traditional Halos, yeah, there wasn't nearly as much customization. I mean, we were pretty much on par with the same amount of customizations we had in Reach as we do in Halo Infinite. But the thing is that a lot of customization you had back in Reach and in Halo 3 is that a lot of it was tied to accomplishments and having a sense of pride and accomplishment if you will when it comes to unlocking various things you can see like my Spartan right here like this is I was trying to think of like what's the most stereotypical Halo 3 Spartan I could possibly think of and then obviously I thought of the Hayabusa set I mean not only did it look completely awesome but it also had a really big sense of achievement when you were able to rock the Hayabusa because you got that for completing the game on Legendary which like in Halo 3 wasn't exactly the hardest difficult thing to do but definitely give you a sense of accomplishment. And honestly, the color variations that we had in classic Halo, not that much, not nearly as much as we have in Halo Infinite. But the thing is, there's a significant difference, like a mental difference when it comes to you choosing your color set, right? Like I said, if I wanted to rock purple, if I wanted to go blue or say orange or something like that, I'm gonna go orange and white or something like that with that kind of look to the whole thing. 
It looks great, but the thing is that I chose that color combination. Where in Halo Infinite, you're choosing it because it looks cool and doesn't really give you that customization feel that you want to have when it comes to your Spartan. You definitely get that with your armor setup. You get plenty of customization involved with that. So I feel like the armor look that my character has definitely is like my Spartan. It's definitely enough options where I feel like I have enough things to choose from to have a Spartan that feels uniquely me. But the coating is a big thing about that and the colors that you choose really kind of almost make a representation of who you are in game. So while classic Halos had less options honestly than Halo Infinite, but the thing is that most of it was tied to accomplishments in game for the classic Halo games, as well as you being able to personally choose what you want, give you much more of a sense of creativity and a much more better representation of who you are in game. Now there is a little bit of a way to choose and find some ways to kind of accomplish different bits of customization with the locker system that they have within the campaign, which was a great way to incentivize people to jump in, buy the campaign, play, and also find these things out. But they don't really feel like that much of an accomplishment, mainly because most of us are just gonna go online, search up where to find the lockers, and then, well, click on them and open them up that way. You don't really feel like you accomplish much by just searching up a YouTube tutorial. But there's definitely a way Halo Infinite can create the sense of accomplishment and creativity within their game rather easily, and they've done it before. And the way they've done it previously is with the challenge system in the Master Chief Collection, where you had these seasonal challenges with kind of these large overarching challenges for you to accomplish while you're playing Halo. And that would be just things like right here saying complete 50 match made games in PvP. That's more just kind of jump in and just play the game for more than just like that week. Earn 200 multi-kill or spree category medals in PvP matches that are match made. That's gonna take some time, but you can easily do this within Halo Infinite to where you create a challenge that's going to stick throughout the rest of the season. Once players get that challenge completed, they can have a different piece of coding. They can have a different bit of armor set or a completely new armor set part of the game to give you a sense of like long-term accomplishments, which is greatly needed right now in Halo Infinite. That way you can look at that a piece of customization and be like, I actually earned that rather than just grinding through some meaningless challenges or just straight up buying it outright. It also gives players a bit of prestigious customization, which is desperately needed in Halo Infinite because at least now you can look at somebody like, okay, they played the game a lot, they earned that. Well, right now when I see a customization, I go, oh, they have some extra cash to throw around. And say if a lot of people weren't able to get that prestigious item, possibly it could come into the store in a later season. We saw this done in MCC, where later on items that were no longer obtainable through challenges or anything like that were able to be obtained through like the store that they have within MCC. And we do know 343 did state that they actually are looking to bring some things back. Right here on Twitter, Unishai Community Manager replied to about these previously locked away season one bits of customization. A user asked, is there any chance we can see this come back anytime soon? And Unishai replied saying, some bundles may return in the future. If they do though, it may not be for a couple months. Hang in there. Again, this is kind of playing to that exclusivity of willing to buy into some of these items. So hopefully we can see them come back at a lower price or something like that. But I do think that a lot of this is very needed for Halo Infinite to help bring in some customization or maybe return items at a lower discount so people who buy into that stuff get the first like six months of having that exclusivity of feeling like they got some new cool stuff. But what about those coatings and that point I brought up of being able to choose your color exactly how you want it? Really giving you that sense of customization that's really missing within Halo Infinite. Well, I think one way we could possibly have that happen is with the default coatings that we have give them primary secondary options where you can choose your colors however you like, but if you want to have some more extra kind of colorization, more detailed oriented kind of stuff, this is where the coatings could really fit in to really give a sense of purchase necessity when it comes to the customization, especially the colorization of Spartans within this game, where the coatings can help provide some more unique options for people to buy into, where if you have the primary secondary options for like you free to play players, you still have a chance to feel like you've created something that's yours, even though it could be very generic, but just having those options out there really helps out. So does Halo Infinite have a customization problem? Yeah, but can it get fixed? Absolutely. Though one part of Halo Infinite that has a lot of potential is the Forge mode. And if you guys want to see some more leaks like a Guardian remake or the Nether from Minecraft recreated in Halo Infinite, check out this short video right here. Thank you very much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.